you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I just pray that you just move in our service today. And Lord, in everything that we say and do, in Jesus' mighty name. We stand and lift up our hands. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship Him now. How great, how awesome is He. We stand and lift up.
Lord, you are the only one that is worthy, Lord Jesus. Lord, you are holy. Holy. Holy, Lord Jesus. You are holy, Lord Jesus.
You are 
worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Oh
Jesus, God, that the Lord exalts itself against you or higher than you in our lives. In the name of Jesus. 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 Would you give the Lord a mighty hand of praise this morning? by which you live and are blessed. Amen. And I believe we have that definition of a pastor. So happy birthday. And here is your card. Thank you so much for being Thank our you. pastor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. I would just like all of you to reach your hands, stretch them forth to our pastor, and we're going to pray. Lord, we just come before you right now, and we thank you for bringing Ben Rhodes to this Prosser Church of God. I know he ministers in many capacities, in the community, online, to foreign lands, to the state, to the youth, Lord God. He ministers, and his wife beside him, and she just just lifts him up, I know, in prayer and in so many ways, and we thank you for that. And Lord, we ask you to continue to anoint him, bless him abundantly, Lord, in his mind, body, soul, spirit, and finances, Lord God. Whatever he needs at the time, please give to him, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, before he knows he needs it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you all so much. And, uh, <laughs> Julia, I'm going to need to adjust. This is mic adjusted for uh, speaking and not singing. Um, thank you so much. I appreciate everyone. Yes, I, I am uh, not yet a year older, but next week or this Friday coming, I'm going to be a year older than I am right now. And uh, I'm going to let you guys do the math. I was born in 1980, and so that should be pretty easy to tell how old I am. Um, but I'm so thankful to be here. I'm so thankful for the Lord, and I'm so thankful for all that he's doing and all that he's done. And I'm just excited for... Uh, in, in 
anticipation for uh, what God is going to do and even going to do today. Um, but before we go into the word this morning, I just want to make a, a couple of announcements that uh, keep on praying for Rilla. Um, uh, but she is uh, coming back. She's going to be in Sunnyside at uh, uh, Prestige. And so she is improving. And so we, last, last week, we didn't know what was going to happen. And the doctors didn't know what was going to happen. But praise the Lord uh, that God is moving and God has touched her. Uh, she's not all the way better yet. And she has a lot to, lot, lot to go through, a lot of things that are still in the process. Uh, but she is improving. So we want to be praying for her, that God would just help her and with the pain and all those things that go along with that. Uh, but just keep on praying. Um, and uh, there are those that aren't here, uh, some that aren't feeling well, and there are some uh, that are gone, that are out of town. We want to be remembering each other in prayer, and uh, that God would just move and touch and minister to each one. And even those that are here, I want to say this morning that God is going to touch you, and God's going to minister you. And God is here, and he is the healer. He is the one who ministers, and he's, he's the one that completes us. Soul, mind, body. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I also want to mention that anytime we have our offering box that is back there. So for offering, that's where we have offering. We don't take our, our as we used to, but we have an offering box that's in the back. And you can give at any, at any time you want. You can also give online. And you can also give throughout the week. And so there are, many, uh, there are a few different uh, opportunities to give there. Um, I want to also mention that uh, we do have... Back there for if there are areas that you're interested in helping the church or helping in different areas in the church, um, there is a, a paper that's back on the, the back table there um, that uh, lists some of the needs that we have here in the church, and uh, um, but also uh, have a little sign, uh, sign up area uh, of if you're wanting to minister in a certain area, uh, be it from greeter to usher to altar worker. Um, sign up for that. Put your name down, and we will um, we will do training and everything for those areas. And so we're in the process of getting that down and seeing who's interested and who would want to be a part of one of those. So check that out. Look at that. Uh, sign up. Uh, just put your name down, and we will uh, work towards those areas in training. And if you're interested in working in an area and you're just like, I don't know, well, we'll work with you. Um, and uh, I believe it, it. You know, there's there's things that some are uncomfortable comfortable with and say, well, I don't know how to do that. Well, we can help you to learn that as well. So uh, just keep that um, uh, keep that in mind. And uh, I think, oh, also, uh, we're having Superhero Olympics on August 27th, and that's our, with our kids program. They were just uh, in their lesson and their learning uh, about, uh, uh, about that and uh, for the Lord. And so we're going to have Superhero Olympics at the uh, the park by the pool on August 27th at 10 a.m. And um, I'm sure I have a, someone wrote me a note. Oh, it's right here. Someone said that. Okay, Superhero Olympics, August 27th. I did it uh, at 10 a.m. All right. Uh, but uh, for those that are interested or the uh, different uh, kids that are interested or even adults that want to help out with that, um, that will be kind of our end of the summer uh, kids, uh, kids um, and end of the lesson that they've been in. Um, so would you pray with me this morning? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just, I come to you right now, Lord Jesus. We come together, Lord, in agreement, Lord Jesus. Lord, for, for what you want and what you have in store for each and every one of us this morning. Lord God, you have a purpose. You have a plan. Lord, we know, Lord God, that you have a desire for us all to grow in you. Lord, to continue to move forward in you. Lord Jesus, to move from where we are out of our comfort zones, where, Lord, where we have been, and Lord, take a step and take steps of faith each and every day of our lives, Lord God, Lord, to move in you. And God, as we do that, Lord, we know that you work through us and you minister through us, oh God. But Lord Jesus, I, I know that things, Lord God, happen in our hearts and in our lives, Lord, as we, Lord Jesus, pursue after you. Lord, as we seek you, as we draw near to you, Lord God. Lord, there are things that happen in us. There's a change within our own hearts and in our own lives, Lord, that we must, Lord, we must never neglect the time that we spend with you and the importance of that time that we spend with you, Lord God. 
Lord, the time of preparation, Lord, even as the disciples, Lord Jesus, even as they, Lord God, Lord, spent time with you and you sent them out. But Lord, it was in those times with you, Lord God, that made a difference in them that they could reach out and Lord God, Lord, lead the multitudes to you. So, Lord God, I just pray right now, Lord, in this very moment and in this time, Lord, that each and every one of our hearts, Lord God, Lord, that we would have a hunger and a thirst, Lord, for you like never before. I pray, Lord Jesus, that, God, that we would seek you, Lord God, Lord, and that we would draw near to you, Lord, in our lives, Lord God, learning and, Lord, drawing in and being close to you, Lord Jesus, in every area. Lord, it doesn't matter where we're at. It doesn't matter the situation we're in. Lord God, you are all places, and, Lord Jesus, we can draw near to you wherever we are. So, Lord God, I pray, Lord, even before we begin this morning, in this time and in this moment, Lord Jesus, God, that our hearts would be open, and Lord Jesus, that we would take a step towards you. Lord Jesus, to draw near to you, Lord God, Lord, right now, Lord, as we, Lord, are in your presence, Lord, we need you, and Lord God, because things happen, Lord God, when we meet with you. Lord, we love you, God. I love you. Hide me behind your cross. I would not be seen, but God, that you would be seen and that you would be recognized in everything that is said and done this morning. In Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said, Amen. You ever think you know something because you have heard about it or you've seen something, um, maybe even out, from an outside perspective? Anybody uh, think you have grasped? Something I've seen there's many people that have have watched and they've seen and they've seen things done. Uh, but until you really do it, you don't have a clear picture of how or what that exactly looks like. Anybody ever look at maybe even some of us or some of those that have tried to work on cars, tried to work on cars or, or look at something and you look in that engine and you, you, you see, okay, I can see the problem and I have a general idea how to fix that problem. And so you're thinking to yourself, well, that might be just about 30 minutes. But then when you get into it and you actually begin to do the job, you realize there are things that were there that you didn't even expect before. Sometimes you'll get in there and a 30-minute job, you'll realize it'll take you a couple days because then you have to take this off or you have to take that off and you need a new one of these or you need a new one of those. And, and, and so things aren't always what they seem when you look at things from the outside. And, and it can, with, with a, uh, until we, even in a place or something that we see, anyone see a picture of something or, uh, and you say, I want to go there, and then it looks different when you get there. Uh, Julie, um, she, she went to Hawaii without me about 10 years ago, and um, I'm not bitter, I'm okay about it, but she went without me uh, with family watching uh, some of the kids uh, that were there, and it was good. I was, I'm actually happy that she was able to go. But she described, she had a picture in her mind about going to Hawaii and how, how it was going to be like Maui, palm trees, everything green, and she was going to land in this airport, and everything was just going to be just beautiful and lush and green. And, and she flies in, and, and she called me, and she said, it looks like I just flew into L.A., she said, I, we're going to Hawaii. It looks like I just flew into L.A. So her, her pictures and the things that she's seen, uh, she didn't get a grasp of it and what it really was like until she got there. Now, there are other places that weren't around the, uh, the airport that looked differently. But it, it can happen in how we, in our expectations and what we're expecting. But you really don't know until you've been there or until you, that you see it for real. Uh, like taking a picture. Anybody ever take a picture before? I, I did this not too long ago, and, and the moon, it just looked like it was huge, and it was beautiful, and, and I was like, wow, that's amazing, and I get my phone, and I, I, I get it out, and I take a picture because I want to show it to somebody, and I take that picture, and, um, and, and then I look at it, and it just looks like a little speck on my screen. And then I go show the person. They're like, oh, okay, yeah, that's nice. I said, no, you, we say something along the lines that, oh, you had to be there or you had to see it. Uh, for, for you to really understand what it looked like. And everybody's always like, okay, yeah, yeah. But until you've been there or until you experience for real, you really don't have a complete grasp of what you are either looking at or experiencing. And you try to tell somebody, anyone ever try to tell somebody something funny or something that happened that was funny, and then you explain it to them, nobody laughs, nobody thinks it funny, and then what is, the, what is it that we say? 
we say, you had to be there. But you can't fully understand, you don't have a clear picture uh, of God, of Jesus, until you move from looking at him from the outside to entering into his presence and spending time with him. And this can happen to people who are on the road that have been on the road for a long time or have been uh, serving the Lord and know who Jesus is, but you get caught up in the things of the world, not necessarily just sin, but the worries and the cares and the things that are going on all around you. And you, and you begin to kind of step back from God and from, uh, from drawing near and drawing into him. And, and all that you see are the problems. All you see are the situations. And you look at God and you don't look to him through the same lens that you used to. You look at him from a distance and from afar off. And we end up seeing him through all of the problems, all of the worries. And so we see God is over here, we're over here, and then all of these other things are we're looking through trying to see Jesus. And we don't get a clear picture of who he is until, until we push through all of those things and we draw near to God. We see him for who he really is. So my title this morning is In His Presence. And I'm going, we're going to be looking at Isaiah and that when he enters into the throne room of God and what happens in his life as he does that. There's something that changes in his heart. There's something that changes in him, and he is not the same after that moment. And so when we're look, as we're looking in Isaiah um, and the realizations in the presence of the Lord, we're going to be talking about God's dominion, God's holiness, our condition, and his power. In Acts 3, 19 through 20, it says, Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before. Now, that's an interesting scripture because it says, send Jesus Christ. Jesus was already sent, right? But it says, as was sent, uh, who was preached to you before. Here, there is this moving and this drawing in. There's this re repenting and getting all those other things that the refreshing of the Lord may come in our hearts and in our lives. There are times that we just need to be refreshed. And sometimes we think, I need a, I need a refreshing. I need, to, I need a restart. And we need that in our lives. And as simple as this is to turn away from all the things and all the distractions and all the things in this world and turn from those things and turn towards Jesus and draw near to him. And I will guarantee you there's a time of refreshing that happens. There's different types of refreshing that we talk about. There's physical refreshing. It's like cool water being poured on your face after working in the sun. Anybody, it's really hot outside. And, and as you're out there, just, just a splash of cold water on your face just feels so refreshing. There's mental refreshing when you hear good news or you rest or uh, peace and quiet, preparing for something, a meeting, uh, to uh, get together after it's all over. There's this time of mental refreshing that is there that happens uh, in sometimes just kind of quiet times or getting away from things. And sometimes there are those that in the quiet times, that is the hardest time that you have with a mental refreshing. We need our minds placed upon Jesus Christ and healing from him. Their spiritual refreshing and forgiveness, being forgiven, truth of the word of God is refreshing uh, to the soul, trusting, resting in Jesus, peace, rest from the worries of this world. There is refreshing that we find in Jesus Christ. There's a spiritual refreshing. There's a physical refreshing. I, I don't, there, I've been to... Um, services and I've been to things like like camp and but uh, revivals and you go to those things and and you, your body kind of is is physically tired but there's a spiritual refreshing that you have that almost just rejuvenates the physical that you just want to keep pursuing and you just want to keep on going because of the blessing that you find as you reach out to Jesus Christ I'm going to read Isaiah 6 1 through 8 now, there's something major that has happened here in uh, Isaiah's life, this time period, this transition, this time of uncertainty. I don't know about you. I don't like uncertainty. I don't know. I don't like necessarily surprises. 
I get surprises, but I'm not as big of a fan of surprises as like my, my wife. My wife loves surprises. And uh, that's, I drive, jump around the corner and scare her all the time. She loves it. She loves it. No. But surprises. It says an uncertainty. In verse 1, in chapter 6, it says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood a seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. That first song that we sang, that's part of that, right? And the posts of the doors were shaken by the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. So I said, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with the tongs from, uh, from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin purged. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. Now I want to point out just a couple things here, just that even before we move on. We see God, we see God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Holy, holy, holy. And then and as it says, who will go for us? God talks about him and speaks about himself in plurality, as in the, the unity of the Trinity and speaking. Who will go for us? Then he said, here I am, send me. And as I talked this morning, I've talked before and I've in this scripture, but more about the descending part of this message. But I want to focus here on what happens as we enter into the presence of God and spend time with him. Things happen in our lives. Entering his presence, some major things happen because we come in direct, uh, direct presence of the holiness of God. Perfect righteousness, holiness. And Isaiah, here in this moment, he is forever changed after this time. Here, uh, major things happen uh, in our lives. Why? Because in his presence, we are humbled. We get in line with his will. Because we are able to see the stark contrast where we come short and that the best and the goodness is in our goodness is nothing in comparison to the greatness and the, and the goodness of God. But there's something that is very powerful here as we read this and as we look at this. We see holy, holy, holy is God Almighty, his holiness. And, and here Isaiah is in the presence of God. And But one of the greatest mysteries to this moment is that God does not push him away. But God does something different. He calls him closer. I want to say that again. God, in this moment, in the holiness of God, in, in this situation that is there, that God does not push him away, but he asks him and he draws him closer by providing a way for him to be able to enter into the presence of God. There's things that happen here. And one of the things that we see that is very important as we go in, as we spend time with God time with Christ and we draw near to him is that we see God's dominion. Number one, God's dominion. In the year that King Uzziah died, he says, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne high and lifted up and the train of his robe filled the temple. Right? In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne. This is very important for us this morning. High and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Here, Uzziah began reigning as king when he was only 16 years old. 
He went through most all of those years serving God and the word of God talking about that he was a, a good king that followed after the Lord and did it according to all of his father and Isaiah and uh, had done. And it says that he sought God in the days of Zechariah. So here Uzziah um, had a good start in his walk with God. He was doing the things of the Lord and he was doing the things that were right. But Uzziah's life ended uh, tragically. Um, we see because of his heart that was lifted up, and I encourage you to read in 2 Chronicles uh, 26, but his heart was lifted up and uh, he, well, he was exalted in, in himself and he thought that he could do something that God had not permitted him to do. And he goes into the, temple, the, uh, into the temple of the Lord to burn incense at the altar of incense. And this was not for a king to do. This was for the priest to do. And he was not supposed to do this. And he goes in and he burns incense and he thinks that he is able to because, well, I'm the king. I can do what I want. But something happened when he went in and he went against God's word. And Uzziah was struck with leprosy until the end of his life. Wow. So to say that King Uzziah died is to say a lot. It is to say in the year a great and wise king died. But it is also to say in the year of a great and wise king who had a tragic end, he died. This would have been the only king that Isaiah would have known. Isaiah being younger at the time, this would have been the only thing uh, uh, here in Israel to, uh, that he would have understood and what he would have known. And there, there would have been uh, the, even this looking to him because Isaiah desiring to have God, to follow God. He had a good heart. But in this moment, the death of Uzziah, the, because a great king passed away and because uh, his life ended tragically, um, when anything like this happens, sometimes we have a question. Anybody ever question God? You don't have to raise your hand. But you see something that happens, and you just don't understand. And you come to a place within yourself, and, and you're like, God, how could this happen? God, where are you in all of this? God, where are you in this situation? I can't imagine, and you are God, you are Lord of all, and I don't understand why. Anybody ever look to somebody else and, and see them, and you look up to them? As a young, as a young uh, man, there are a lot of uh, people that we've seen, and uh, there were sports players, there were different ones that would look up to, and you would see and be like, okay, I want to be like that, or I want to be like that person. Um, and even with some people where ministries or minister le ministry leaders or pastors or, or those that some call prophets, here there are um, those that they look to and then all of a sudden something happens and they fall or they fail or they come up short. And then in your heart, everything that you were looking at and expecting and seeing and expecting from them, it's like your heart is ripped out and you just don't understand and you have a difficult time grabbing having a hold of that. I've told this before, but I remember when I was a, a, a young minister or um, that I, I seen some of those I, I kind of looked up to and then I, I seen them behind the scenes and seen some of the things they said and heard some of the things they said and, and then seen some of the things they did that wasn't when they weren't up preaching and when they weren't doing uh, other things. And I, I looked at them and I, I just felt like my, my heart was kind of ripped out and I'm trying to understand, Lord, how could they do these things and then do these things? I, I, and it was confusing. There was... Where is the Lord in all of this? And the Lord spoke to my heart. He says, you don't look at them. You look at me. You don't look at them. You look at me. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through him. Jesus is the one that we look to. I want to guarantee you that every person, that every man, or everyone will fail you in some way. Man is not perfect. We look to the one who is perfect. And that is Jesus Christ. Isaiah had a great reason to be discouraged and disillusioned. You see, Uzziah being king was all that he would have known. And here, the king is dead. Let that just sink in. The king of Israel, he's dead. 
What does the future hold? The uncertainty of the future was at hand. And here, and Isaiah is faced with this. And he goes, he goes to the right place because he goes right where he needed to be. And he goes into the temple of God and he is, he is distraught. He doesn't know what to do. And he goes and the king is dead and he goes before God and he goes into the temple. But he wasn't necessarily expecting God to show up. Anyone come into the house of God? Anybody go to meet with God? And you're not really expecting for something to happen. But something needs to happen. And something will happen. Isaiah was in the right place before the Lord in the temple. But what he didn't know is that God was going to show up there. In his hardest moment, in his, in his moment of uncertainty and trying to grasp and to think, what is going on here? The king is dead. God, what's going to happen now? Isaiah needed a refreshing. He needed assurance. And it is about to happen as he enters into the presence of the Lord and into the throne room of God. Now, in this moment, now this is not part of my notes, but here the temple is a picture of what we see in heaven, even in Revelation. And what happens is the heavenly temple is he sees here on earth. Times of refreshing. The question that is asked, where is, the, where is the Lord in all of this? And when we go and when we have a, a time and a moment of uncertainty and we ask that question, God, where are you? I don't know what to do. I don't know the direction to go. God, where are you in all of this? And God shows him something. And if we're not looking close, we will miss it. But God shows him something when he is just going into the temple and he is there. And what does Isaiah? Isaiah sees, he it says that he sees the Lord was sitting on the throne. God was still enthroned in heaven, and God was still in charge of all creation. God was never off the throne, but Isaiah didn't see it until he enters into the presence of God. Now, I want to mention this to you one more time this morning. When we have the question, where is God in all of this? When we go into the presence of God, when we draw near to him, we see see something that is truer, something that is greater, and something that is bigger. We see where God is seated, and God is seated on the throne. King, uh, The king Uzziah may have died, but the king of kings and the lord of lords was still alive. The king Uzziah may have died, but the king of kings and the lord of lords was still alive, and he was seated on the throne. So a great king died, but the king of kings and the lord of lords was still right where he was always been and this revelation a needed re revelation in the presence of God to change his perspective his focus and his attitude here he goes in there and he sees something that is amazing there was a king that had died that was off the throne but he enters into the presence of God and sees that God is still on the throne some of us need to get our eyes off the rulers of this world and get into the presence of God where we can truly see where Jesus is seated. And that is on the throne this morning. We need to get our eyes off the rulers of this world. Get alone with Jesus, praising him, worshiping him. Why? Because your world view will change. Your look and your perspective in this life will change. When you get into the presence of God, when you meet with him and you draw near to him and you focus on him and you put all those other things, as I mentioned before, all the things that blind us and, and keep us from seeing Jesus clearly for who he is, when we push through all of those things and we come before Jesus, Jesus Christ and in his presence we see that he's on the throne and that he's the king of kings and he's the lord of lords why is it so important that we worship with all of our heart because it gets our heart where it needs to be and our eyes set on who it needs to be set on the king of kings and the lord of lords who has all dominion and power let's turn to revelation this morning revelation 5 13 it says, and every created thing which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and on the sea and all things in them, I heard saying to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and dominion forever and ever. Jesus is on the throne this morning. When you get a glimpse of true, true glory, all the other things fade away. 
and we see the real thing. Problems face, that we face and the things that we see, they fade away in the presence of God. Number two, in the presence of God's holiness, it says in verse three, and one cried to another and said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory and the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out and the house was filled with smoke. We go in to seek God's face. We gain perspective and revelation uh, we would not otherwise have. It is interesting when we see a glimpse into God's throne room, what we hear proclaimed and it is the best and the only thing that could truly explain God and that is holy 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 revelation says they say this day and night and it never ends holy 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 Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come there is something that that declares there's something that speaks about God's holiness there is only one who can hold this title and that is Jesus Christ the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords the holiness of God, that he is truly the only one that can truly hold this title. There is no challenger that can take it. There's no opponent that can obtain it by will or by force. This is one of the infinite amount of things that can only be attributed to God, and that is God's holiness. God is holy. God is holy, and he calls us to be holy as he is holy, but it can only be attained and only be done because of the price that Jesus has paid and that he draws us into himself, and because of what he has accomplished, it is through him, by him alone. God is holy, our best, our most sacred we have to offer is not even close to the whiteness and the holiness of God. This brings the shaking. The crying of the holy to the, the, to the one who is holy, the statement, the whole earth is full of his glory, as this is being said and this is happening, a shaking, an earthquake begins to happen from the voice that is speaking it. And it's shaking the doorpost of the temple and in the front of the holies of holies. And so here, the picture that we get, the doorpost of, of, in, in the temple and into the holies of holies, and here as this voice is happening, it is as though... It is the picture that we have at the doorposts that are there that there's this voice that is coming because we see in the temple that there was a curtain, there was a barrier between where he would have entered in and as this is happening and the voice that is coming from behind there is shaking the doorposts. It is shaking the doorposts that is holy, holy, holy. Revelation tells us the smoke is the glory of the Lord of, of the Lord and power and the glory of the Lord, it says, fills the temple. We see the smoke that we see is this, this presence of God that is there, and the glory of God. We need to be in his presence. We need to be in his presence. Our condition is revealed in the presence of holiness. Revelation of heart are, are revealed, the stark contrast are revealed. I have never come and never been in a time of prayer and supplication entering into God's presence without this naturally happening. There is something that, hap there is something that happens when we come into the presence of God, we're meeting with God. There is something that happens, and I find myself in this place, although he is the one that paid the price for me, and he is the one, and I recognize all of that, but there is something I find myself doing exactly this, is, Lord, I'm not worthy. Lord, you're worthy. And when we come into the presence and we meet with God, there are things that are revealed to our heart and the condition of our heart. And you ever go to prayer with the Lord and think you're good? Think that you're perfect, that, oh, God, I'm, I got things going. I got things good. I, things are, are, are all right in my life. And then you go into the presence of God, and you begin to worship him, and you begin to draw near to him. And there's something that happens in your heart and in your life that you realize that, Lord, in comparison to you, Lord, you are the one that's holy. You are the one that is worthy. I, and we begin to see our condition. But in that process... We see Jesus has paid the price for us. Jesus has made the way for us. Jesus is the one that has made a way that we can even enter in and draw near to him. And, and, but there's things that happen in that process. We grow. Our eyes are opened. And God, if there be anything in me 
Show me that I may be more like you. In verse 5, it says, So I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man and unclean lips. He gets into the presence of God and says, God, I should not be here. <laughs> I should not be here. And I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. God, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Our condition is revealed to us in his presence. He says, woe is me. But something even greater than our condition is shown in power. He says, then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with the tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin is purged. Here we see the picture. Isaiah realizes, oh, God, I'm undone. I am not worthy. I'm a man in unclean lips. And But then God says, oh, don't worry about that. I've got you covered. He said, don't worry about that. I've got you covered. And then the angel flies and gets a coal from off the altar, the altar, and he br brings it, and he puts it on his lips and purges his lips of all uncleanliness that came from the altar, the place that the, the incense went before God, the off the altar, this place of forgiveness and where things have happened. And here he takes it and he places it upon his lips and he says that your sins have been taken. Your iniquity has been taken. You have been cleansed and you have been made clean. He says, don't worry about entering in. Don't worry about coming closer because I've got you covered. And I want to say this morning that Jesus has got you covered. If you are afraid to enter into the presence of God or to draw near to him because of this sin or that sin or something, you say, God, I can't enter in. I am unholy. God, God, I can't go draw near to you. I am unholy. Jesus says, I've got you covered. When I died on that cross for your sins, when, I, when the, my life was given for you, your sins were taken away. Your sins were purged. They are gone. You can enter into my presence because of what I have accomplished on the cross for you. There is no excuse for us to enter into the presence of God, to be refreshed, to be changed by him and through him. When we get our perspective and everything change as we enter in unto the Lord, the enemy is the one who will to us and say that we cannot go any further. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me, and being through him, because of the price he paid, we can enter in. Amen. People go on vacations. People take days off. People rest from this and rest from that. People take, take off from church, all trying to find rest and get refreshed. People say, I need a vacation from my vacation. I did all of that, and I still have no rest. People say a lot of things, and they're trying to find rest. They're trying to be refreshed, and they're trying to find something to fill the soul and fill, fill us. But Jesus is the only one that can change our condition. Jesus is the only one that can truly refresh our soul. Jesus is the only one that our iniquity is taken away and our sins are gone, that we may be refreshed in the presence of our God and of our Savior. People have not been able to work here and there and are still have no rest. They are not refreshed, but worry about what I'm going to do now. Isaiah didn't know what he was going to do when the King Uzziah died, he, but he entered until he entered into the presence of God, and then his eyes were opened. I want to tell you, you can have rest in your body. You can have rest, and you can try to do this and that, but you can have rest in Jesus Christ. But if you're not resting in Jesus and spending time with him, you will be restless, always looking always trying in the spirit this morning how many need a shaking in your heart how many need a refreshing in your heart we need to stop looking at the rulers of this world and start looking at the ruler of the world the one who's on the throne Jesus Christ who is seated at the right hand of the father who is on the throne Maybe we forgot. Maybe we haven't seen him in a while. Maybe we haven't entered into his presence for a while. Maybe we've been looking at the kings and the rulers of this world and all the stuff. I, I want to I tell you, I, I, I don't mind the news. I like what's, looking at what's going on and what's happening. I don't mind doing that. That is, I, that is something that I've always done. Even as a kid, I used to watch the news with my mom when I was a kid. And uh, I, I, I kind of enjoyed it, even as a little kid. Most kids don't like to watch the news, but I watched the news, and I learned a lot of things. But looking at those things, 
and not looking at who's really in charge will give us a bad perspective about things in this world. Where Jesus, where his glory is revealed, he is high and lifted up and his train fills the temple. The Bible says we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Let his glory fill us today. Let his glory fill us today. Would you bow your heads with me? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You are the way maker this morning. You are holy. God, you are holy. Holy Spirit, holy. You are holy. Lord, I, I don't know, Lord, what every heart and what every life has dealt with this week or have been overcome with one thought or another thought, and that's what's been in their heart, and that's what's been in their mind. Lord Jesus, we are here this morning, all gathered together in your name. Lord Jesus, you say that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Lord, that your spirit dwells in us. Lord God, that we, and Lord, we can meet with you anywhere we are. Lord, we are not limited. We can meet with you in the car. We can meet with you outside. We can meet with you, Lord, at any place, at any time, and at any moment. But Lord Jesus, there is something that happens when we meet with you, Lord God, in the congregation, Lord Jesus. Lord, when we are all agreeing upon one thing. Lord, when our eyes are turned upon you and we are, Lord, together, your church, Lord Jesus, your church, Lord God, is not separate, but Lord, it is, Lord, with us together, Lord God, in the spirit, Lord, and in you. So, Lord Jesus, I pray, Lord, right now for everybody who's here and all of those who are watching online. Lord, I pray right now, Lord God, that we, Lord, would go from where we are and, Lord Jesus, that we would push, Lord, through all of those other things, Lord God, Lord, that have been distracting us, that have been blinding us to your holiness, oh God. Right now in this very moment, you might be saying this morning, well, I don't really have any sin or anything in my heart. I, I, I'm, I'm good. You may be saying this morning that I'm fine, but I guarantee you that things that are not just things that you would consider sin, but things that blind you and have blocked you from seeing Jesus clearly, that have kept you from moving forward, that have kept you from drawing near to Him. You look, begin and you have begun to look at Jesus from afar off. And you need to draw in this morning. This morning, I, I feel as our church that every time that we have the doors open, that to give an opportunity to draw near to God, to come to God, to move from where we are and draw near to Him for freedom, for deliverance, for salvation, for drawing closer. And so right now, I am just going to, I'm just going to open up these altars. Sometimes it just takes a step from where you are and saying, God, I'm working past those things that have distracted me and I am going to a place I know I can meet with you. I'm going to a place I know I can see you. I'm going to a place to where I just need prayer and I need someone to pray for me and that, that these things would leave and that I would be able to see you clearly. If that is you this morning, would you just make your way up to this altar? Would you just make your way up to this altar and just lift your hands towards heaven and meet with the King of kings and the Lord of lords? Jesus is on the throne this morning. Jesus is on the throne this morning. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Lord God Almighty, Lord Jesus, we worship you. We praise you, Lord God. Lord, we give our all into your hands this morning, Lord Jesus. Lord, 
Lord, I'm done with the things of this world. I'm done at looking at all this and all of that and all the things that weigh, Lord, me down. I am done looking at those things, Lord Jesus, and I am looking at you this morning. I am looking at you this morning. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Lord, we're meeting with you. Even if where you're at right now, if you, you just want to meet the Lord right where you are, would you just do that? If you want to stand and lift your hands, if you want to turn and you want to kneel, let's meet with the Lord this morning. Lord God Almighty, Lord, we just worship you. We have praise God. You are worthy of all praise. 